Hello and welcome to Security Scan. I'm Uday Bhaskar. This week, we review the recently concluded Aero India 2017 in relation to Make in India. Our extrapolation is what are the challenges and opportunities for Indian aviation? To briefly recap, the 11th edition of Aero India was held in Bengaluru in mid February. This is the world's second largest air show after Paris. As many as 549 firms or companies participated, of whom half were Indian. The indigenous Netra, an airborne early warning and control system, was handed over to the Indian Air Force at the Aero Show. And furthermore, the first indigenous multi role helicopter was showcased by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Now, while Make in India was the primary focus of Aero India 2017, the reality is that India does not have the capacity yet to design and manufacture its own aircraft. India is a major arms buyer and is at the top of the global list. Both fixed wing and rotary aircraft are part of this imported inventory. And all estimates suggest that the requirement for the Indian military alone over the next two decades is considerable. It could run into hundreds of rotary wing platforms or helicopters and fixed wing aircraft. Can India make the right policy decisions to give a fillip to the indigenous design and manufacturing capability so that we can proudly unveil a credible designed and made in India aircraft. To help us understand this domain, we have three experts and I must admit that as a sailor, I am overwhelmed today by these air warriors. Allow me to welcome and introduce Air Vice Marshal Manmohan Bahadur. He is a distinguished fellow at the Center for Air Power Studies. Air Marshal Nirdosh Pyagi, a former Deputy Chief of the Air Force. And Air Marshal Pramod Athavle, who was formerly the AOCNC of the Maintenance Command, the Technical Command of the Air Force. Let me turn to you first, AVM Bahadur. If you could just help us to understand what were the highlights of Aero India 2017 this year? What, what are the sort of big kind of takeaways for the average Indian citizen? Yeah, actually, uh, the Aero India has a very checkered past. I started in 1991 as Avia India till it became Aero India in 1996. So uh, this year, if we can devise, uh, if we can divi divide the, the aircraft that were displayed in fixed wing and rotary wing uh, segments. In the fixed wing side, on the fighter side, we had the in renewed interest in India because of the demand of the Indian Air Force, uh, a requirement for the Indian Air Force of approximately 200 odd single engine fighters. So you had the Gripen from Sweden, uh, the uh, F-16 from the Americans doing their show. And we had the important Tejas, our own Tejas, doing a demo and taking up uh, people for customer flights, as they are mentioned. As and Tejas is designed and built in India. That's right. Uh, a special vehicle, shall, I, shall we say, the Aeronautical Development Establishment uh, Agency, AADA, was made. And now the Tejas is flying and the Air Force is going to get 123 of them. So that's the product that the Air Force is looking forward to in the right time with the right type of product support from HAL. That is important. Uh, in the rotary wing side, uh, we have the light utility helicopter which flew uh, in the Aero India. Now this is to replace the uh, Chetak and Cheetah helicopters in the light segment. Now, and HAL, this is also made in India? The that's LUH? Right. The LUH is, the, is a prototype we just flew. Uh, and by the time the LUH comes of age, that is, finishes the prototype flying, that gap is supposed to be filled in by car 226 from Russia. Uh, car India, as in Kamov. Car as in Kamov. And that's going to be made uh, partly uh, in uh, assembled in India by HAL. So I see a little bit of conflict of interest possibly because HAL is making the LUH also. Uh, but 
The important product, rotary wing, is the light combat helicopter. If HAL gets its act together with good manufacturing and product support, then there is no other helicopter in the world which can actually go and land at 15,000 feet. Actually, it's gone and landed at Kumar Post, the LCH, and deliver armament at that altitude. So, the Indian military needs a helicopter that can fly at these very high altitudes. But I'll come back to you. If I remember right, Manmohan, were you one of the first to land your chopper at Siachen? Oh, that, yeah, that was long back, 1978. So, this is a compulsion, an operational requirement. Uh, actually, requirement. Uh, the requirement came up and we felt the need in Kargil. Uh, but that's a long story. But I'll it's, come back to you on this chopper. Can I just one Please. more point. On the, on the transport side, uh, the good part was that for the first time, not for the first time, sorry. Uh, the Ministry of Civil Aviation has joined up with the MOD to have a singular air show. This was a requirement that I have been writing about earlier too. Because we split and the civil part started happening in Hyderabad, which was absolutely incorrect. Because air power is indivisible. Indivisible. The Air Force always reminds that's us. Right. So this time we have civil and military together. Including the manufacturer. Okay. So that's a good sign. But Air Marshal Tyagi, if I could request you, when we talk about the Indian Air Force, now this is something, as I said, air power is indivisible. Let it be said again. And as the lead agency, the Indian Air Force now has a requirement which it has projected. Very often we say that the sanctioned strength in terms of the fighter aircraft, the combat squadrons, is now at a very, shall we say, low level. And the future seems to be a bit, shall we say, uncertain. So can you just help us to understand what is our requirement for the Indian Air Force over the next 20 years, both fixed wing and rotary? First, coming to fixed wing and fighters, uh, we are almost 10 squadrons short of our sanctioned strength. Now, each squadron has uh, about 18 to 20 aircraft. So, if you uh, have total strength of the Air Force for 40 squadron would be 800 aircraft. Uh, whatever numbers we are short, we got to make good that. And after that, we got to take care of retirements during this period. There are a lot of aircraft which, are, which will be phased out during this period and uh, they have to be replaced. So, in fighters, the requirement uh, will exceed 400 aircraft. Um, now, uh, coming to transport aircraft, uh, we have a project, uh, medium transport aircraft, which is being done with uh, Russia. And if that fructifies, then there will be uh, one aircraft in uh, medium category. Very large, heavy transport aircraft will continue to be bought because the internal demand is not adequate to justify manufacture here. And uh, very light. Uh, transport aircraft, there is a requirement and the numbers are difficult to specify, but uh, I would say this will run into hundreds. Coming to helicopters, there is a 400 uh, aircraft of light uh, helicopter requirement, which is going to be met uh, as uh, Avian Bahadur has already covered. In uh, medium helicopters, uh, we have uh, inducted uh, quite a bit, but uh, the aircraft which are phased out, the replacement well, once again could exceed 100. Uh, over this period and uh, then there will be attack helicopters, weaponized helicopter, I, uh, uh, you can add some numbers. But please correct me if I am wrong on this, apart from the Indian Air Force, the requirement for helicopters is something that even the Indian Navy and the Indian Army would also have a certain requirement which we would have to aggregate as also I imagine the Central Armed Police because we are now seeing that whether it's the BSF you know, there seems to be a need for the Home Ministry also to have. So, my sense is that Rotary Wing is going to be across the board. Apart from the Indian military, we will have Home and perhaps even the Civil Aviation, including disaster relief. So, there would be a wider bandwidth. Would that be a fair assessment? Uh, yes. Uh, helicopter is a very versatile platform and there is no justification for not using it uh, for many actions which can be done. So, as well. I said, there is a so national requirement. There is a national requirement. For? And uh, this 400 light uh, helicopter includes uh, army requirement. But in case of medium helicopter, Navy has a huge requirement. And uh, that's why I gave a figure which runs into hundreds. So, the short point is that it's a reasonably, shall we say, sizable requirement over the next 20 years, both fixed wing and rotary. But coming to you, Air Marshal Athavle, now as the senior most technical officer of the Indian Air Force at one point, now we know that, frankly, for the last 70 years, 
India is going to celebrate its 70th anniversary of independence in August this year. Our track record in being able to design and manufacture an aircraft has been mixed. I think Bahadur used the word checkered kind of experience we've had going back to the HF-24 and whatever we did as far as the rotary wing, shall we say, efforts were concerned. Now it appears that whether it is the Tejas or the LUH, the light helicopter, we have made some investments. So where are we now in terms of being able to actually cross the inflection point? One of you used that phrase. So how would you characterize the technical part of the challenge? Uh, I must uh, put across a few points uh, of analysis before I Please. go to recommendations of, of uh, a few points of way ahead and whatever. One thing is we often mistake uh, make in India or indigenization to be our goal, which actually is not correct. Our goal, national goal is to have a strong military that can assert the nation's will. And towards that, make in India is a very, very vital critical success factor. Because if we do not have indigenous capability, we would be throttled by external powers that it uh, be. And the dilemma is that along with this, the Indian Air Force or the larger air powers require the state-of-the-art weapon systems. And that unfortunately, as you said yourself, is are not available, that is not available within the country and therefore by foreign and by indigenous are the, one, are the two conflicting action uh, items which we are unable to come to terms with. And to that, I wish to say that, I, I, in my opinion, the make in India has not been possible for, for the last 40 years, not because of lack of technology, otherwise we wouldn't have gone to space with that kind of a claim, but because of uh, lack of human synergy. Lack of? Human synergy. Synergies. Okay. Synergy. And I, I call it the I am God syndrome, actually. Uh, since you talked of the HF 24 days from then on, uh, the defense R&D and the defense public sector undertakings have grown into large empires, gods in, in their own right. And truly, Indian Air Force is also one of those gods in its own right. So the many gods coming together somehow are unable to uh, synergize, synergize. And, and, okay. and make it happen. And why does it happen is because, I'll, I'll give you a few examples. First, the, the projection of indigenous projects is, is unrealistic. Now we, have, we, are, we are all very proud of, and I wear Tejas on my, on my coat, we are very proud of Tejas, but Tejas has actually happened in 35 years, and the original pro projections were not so. With projections being unrealistic, the Air Force finds itself in, in, a, in a state of jeopardy where its uh, foreign acquisitions could get jeopardized and I remember during the induction of Sukhoi 30s uh, at that time itself the popular phrase of LCA is coming was the one which always came in the way and because of that reason perhaps the Air Force is unable to wholeheartedly contribute and participate in, in indigenous in the programs in India effort. lest their uh, other acquisitions with more uh, capable requirements. Get I'm affected. going to come back to you about the way ahead, but yes. Mallon, if I could ask you to weigh in on this, because this is something that's often discussed when we talk about the Indian experience. Could the Air Force have done this whole thing differently? And why I'm raising this is that we often talk about the experience of the Navy, where the Indian Navy invested in design. You know, we created a design bureau and then worked with the shipyards particularly the lead yard was the Mazagon dock in Mumbai. Now, when we look back, and since now you are in the center for air power studies and you are looking at this in a very strategic sense, whatever be the experience of the past, can that be utilized to do better in the future? Meaning that should we go only for the rotary aircraft? Is that an easier option? Should we go for a medium level transport aircraft because there is a market for it? Or have we done the right thing by investing in the Tejas? Because there are some professionals even within the Air Force who say that the, Air F the Tejas may not be the best platform to give the Indian Air Force the combat edge that it needs. So, I mean, there's a cluster of questions. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, there is a um, uh, dichotomy between modernization and indigenization. 
modernization means now we require state of the art now or maybe the next few years but indigenization by itself takes time in decades so the point is what i marshall at havle says that the op capability has to be maintained so we know where we are we acquire weapons or weapon systems so as to maintain our capability and the process of this acquisition must help in the indigenization process that is what the whole aim is because you cannot indigenize in a hurry it it, it just cannot be done so could we have done things differently i think at that point of time when it was thought that um, the design and development of say let's take the tejas or the helicopter part the helicopter design bureau there was earlier an aircraft design bureau in hal incidentally so frankly speaking there was an aircraft design bureau and a helicopter design bureau in hal who were to give us the products then ada was created for tejas that possibly led to a little bit of a problem but now we are 70 years down the line we have got established r&d agencies should we go back and form a design bureau or a design setup in the air force in my opinion i don't think that would be correct there are people who who view that we should go the navy way my personal view is we have got special people who are there we have invested crores and crores so shall we triplicate the effort by forming a design bureau here we have our representatives in hal in the aircraft uh, in ada in the national flight test center so i think the input of air force exists yes, okay just hold on to that pramod you want to come in on this yes uh, in fact ekomodo jajit singh has been has been yes. the proponent of uh, the design uh, yeah. coming in within the that's where i heard it by the yes. way so i'm sharing it uh, uh, i i actually uh, would support that not exactly of the of the uh, kind of scope that we become designers ourselves we don't need to com- compete with uh, the designers of within the country but if we have a directorate of design we will understand designs better to to get closer to the indigenous manufacturing and uh, a little uh, away from there i would say there is a need within the air force to at least set up a few labs of research if not design department itself uh, uh, like air force uh, research lab for software air force research lab for mechanical systems for electronics uh, systems and things like that because we do a many a project with the indigenous industry where we actually uh, interact with them and get things developed we would be able to do a far better job if we have a, our own research labs if we don't have enough maybe we can convert a few brds into into research labs and and then get better off that that's so that's the option yes. we should be looking at nirdosh yes. you want to come in on two areas yes. one is this whole question about the design capacity whether it's in the air force or outside the air force the second is a question that you know often comes up is air power becoming very expensive and therefore should india be looking at other options you know is there any other way out or we have to remain invested now as they say aerospace power two questions i'll answer the first one uh, the second one first yeah if there is no alternative to air power uh, worldwide so leave alone in india and it's not expensive what it contributes uh, uh, you get uh, very good value for your money that you invest now coming to the mm-hmm. other part there is no dichotomy in um, say modernization and investing in uh, research and doing things indigenously uh, that is my experience uh, i had given an example of uh, 40 scorns but actually indian air forces sanction strength is 42 and aspiration is 45 so if you take 900 aircraft uh, total and deficiencies being of the order of some 300 then uh, you can continue to go ahead with a program which gives you 100 150 aircraft and invest in another purchase which gives you the same number so when you uh, invest in tejas it doesn't mean that your modernization is suffering we followed this approach for uh, uh, m- many systems like uh, uh, there were some missiles which were bought from uh, foreign vendors and at the same time akash was developed evax uh, airborne early warning and control system was purchased and uh, drdo developed uh, awnc netra yeah the netra, netra is the success yes. story and uh, in the next round when uh, this stabilizes drdo will go in for a full fledged uh, 
uh, FX, FX uh, 360 system. degree. So this is the approach which we have been following and that is mainly because the deficiencies are very large. Now whether you should have uh, a design uh, within in-house or outside, um, uh, Pramod can, I mean what he says I <laughs> tend to go along but with But can I, views. you know, as I said, I just want to ask you one more question and I will come back to the other two panelists which is this whole question of the engine. Now it is often said that making a fighter engine is at the highest levels of technological capability and that this has been a major shall we say constraint for India that even now when we talk about the Tejas that the engine that we have fitted on it is something that we still have not acquired the capacity. So how do you frame the challenge of propulsion? Uh, yeah, Propulsion is an area in which we must make heavy investments. DRDO had a program in uh, GTRE, uh, Kaveri and uh, Kaveri somehow was not successful. Uh, we should go in for, uh, in such critical areas, you should go in for a collaborative approach that is uh, co-development and co-production. That is the only approach which can give you uh, quick time realization. If you try to do things uh, from the uh, basic principles or, or, or from, from scratch, uh, from scratch it is going, it's going to take very long. And it seems that currently the effort of the government is to have tie-ups that would allow this kind of maybe a JV with engines. But let me ask you another question Manmohar, you are a chopper man. For India, is it easier, I am coming back to this question that many Indians ask, should we have gone the way that Brazil did? Meaning that you invested in a transport aircraft and took maybe 15-20 years. But today Brazil has a niche when it comes to the transport sector in the medium level or alternatively should we have just stuck to choppers you know what is the kind of is, is that a viable choice? You see the security environment of every country is different sir. So I think um, comparing the two models of say Brazil and India uh, may not be ex ex exactly right. Uh, they invested in the transport segment and, and in the trainers too and uh, Gradually now, if you notice, they have gone on to setting up a plant for the Gripen. That is what is going to happen in Brazil. So should we have done similar? Um, I think our requirement was across all the three sectors. I think we should have been a little more focused as Air Marshal uh, Tiagi yes. brought out. The investment required in any aviation industry, in any aviation segment is large, is high. And we tend, we have tended to underestimate the time the factor. And, the, and cost. the cost as also the human resource. Uh, we had uh, in one of the seminars which was brought out that for example uh, the GTRE in their Kaveri engine project had 300 engineers working. Uh, there is a private sector company which works into this uh, Pratt & Whitney engines which are in the news nowadays, the new engines. They have, they had 300 GTRE, these people had 1500 engineers working for, the for same 5 kind of years producing. You know, so, so there has been an underestimation. That gives us an idea about the scale. That's Listen, I am sorry, all of you as air marshals have reminded me that air power is indivisible. But it appears that our time frame has now become very, very limited. So, you will forgive me. But at the end of the day, air power transmuted to include the gamut of aerospace power is the new currency of military capability. And most major nations are investing in this domain. The preferred military spectrum of the 21st century will be the maritime, aerospace, cyber continuum. And the need for India to acquire an appropriate and affordable level of domestic design and manufacturing capability in the aviation sector is not disputed. The challenge is how to get there. The Modi government has prioritized Make in India in the defense sector. And as our discussion highlighted, the task is formidable and cost intensive, but within the realm of feasible, but only if the right policy decisions are taken. India's experience over the last seven decades in the nascent design and stalled production of major military platforms merits detailed study by today's policymakers. In the past, imprudent political decisions have led to avoidable time delays and considerable fiscal losses. India's human resource in the aviation sector needs to be nurtured assiduously. And the Indian Air Force as the lead institution and other aviation professionals in the country should become involved stakeholders in this entire process. These are some of the challenges that lie ahead and the opportunities that beckon. 
hopefully future editions of aero india will see a higher percentage of made in india platforms being showcased on that note allow me to thank my guests three air marshals bahadur tyagi and athavle and thank you for watching security scan goodbye